Take a Test UK or join our Facebook page, Saving Lives HIV. Take a Test UK is a product of Saving Lives. Greetings. Still not sure when or where to book your well-deserved holiday away? Well, the best advice would be today. Call us at Diamond Travel and treat yourself to the fantastic worldwide offers available with our exclusive special fares to the Caribbean and the USA. If it's flights only or accommodation only or a great family package holiday to the sun, then Diamond Travel is the place to call. We also offer a host of other services for weddings and honeymoons, cruise and stay, fly drives, your coach to the airport or over night stay with parking also a pickup on your touchdown in your destination diamond travel will cater for your every holiday need with regular worldwide offers on sale make your inquiries today don't delay call us on 0121 454 6990 diamond travel a cut above the rest Hi, you are with Mel from MBM Trinbago Meals, and I'm your soca chef, serving up some Trinidad, authentic Trinidad and Tobago catering from B66 Medic, West Midlands, Birmingham. On our menu, we have street food, aloo pie, doubles, polori. The main meals consist of stewed chicken, curry, aloo, and chicken curry. And we have a vegetarian section, which have bigan choker, pumpkin katari, and we have spinach choker and also tomato choker. But the menu is forever growing. And most importantly, we have our roti section. And I know the people love the roti. Bus up shot, sound a bit like bus up shirt, but that's how we Trini think. And we have dal puri. Some of these are my favorite dishes from childhood and I'm getting to serve them across the whole of the West Midlands and even further. Please feel free to check us out on Facebook at MBM Trinbago Meals or Instagram. Feel free to contact us on 077. 92557204 and check out our menus. We have a tray menu, so if you want to cater for a larger option or a larger family or gathering, feel free to check it out and also give us a call. Take care and see you soon. Hey Audrey, I've been thinking. We've been together seven years now and we still haven't made a will. Well, what's the rush? The kids are still young and so are we. Yes, but anything can happen to anyone at any time. Death has no respect for age. It comes like a thief in the night. And who would look after the kids if something happened to us? Well, my parents, of course. Says who? And what about my parents? Or even your sister? At least with a will, we can decide who would be best suited. So do we need to find a solicitor? No. I found this reputable company approved wills online. They're members of the Institute of Professional Will Writers. And look, they even have a 25% offer on wills and lasting powers of attorney. And here's their number. 0800 699 0953. Mm, I wonder if they do funeral plans. Salsa. 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 Salsa on New Star Radio. The Latin Corner on Sundays between 12 midday and 2 pm with Michael Silvera. Playing Salsa on New Star Radio. New Star Radio. 98.7 FM. 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. It's the Broadcasting across the city on 98.7 FM. New, 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 new style radio.
You're listening to a New Star Radio YouTube channel and uh, newstarradio.com. Welcome to listeners. If we were on the FM, I'd have said, don't touch the dial, because we're going to be having an hour of exciting and energetic discussions. I, I'm pleased to say, I'm Philip Murphy, incidentally, and I'm pleased to say that I've got in this studio with me uh, Sam and Ines and, uh, and, 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 and Max uh, Ailes. Sam and Ines, uh, for listeners who, uh, who don't know, is a, what I would describe as a campaigning journalist and uh, a very, very active um, presence on um, on Facebook, and uh, he's been very much involved here in uh, I I in Birmingham and in London, and we're going to be hearing um, some more from um, Sam and Ines um, soon. And of course, uh, I I I'm pleased to say I've also have my, my dear friend uh, and fellow uh, rebel, uh, uh, Max Ailes, in the studio with me. Of course, for listeners of New Star Radio and uh, viewers, of New Star Radio YouTube channel. Max, it doesn't need an introduction, but for those people internationally who doesn't know Max as well as we do, uh, I'll just say a word about Max. Max is, a, is an award-winning um, uh, um, author, the author of a, a very highly acclaimed uh, autobiography, it Takes to Max, available on Amazon and, and, um, and directly from for Max. Uh, Max has also won many awards for his uh, contribution uh, to the African Caribbean community. He's been given an award for, from uh, Prime Minister Tony Bile. Or, or, or also, um, he's been given uh, an award from his, his great friend. Remind me who your great friend is, Max? Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson, of course. Thank you, Max. Um, uh, uh, I'm getting old and uh, uh, I'm beginning to forget things. And, and, and also he's been given an award uh, from the European Union for his activities and, and, and many, many others. And you will hear more from uh, Max Ailes. So uh, with that, uh, can can I ask you, Simon, to probably start with you first. Simon, you're our guest. I know you're you're more Brummy than we. You were born here in Birmingham, but uh, nonetheless, you've um, I know you've got uh, you've left us and uh, to the great big uh, city. So, Simon, uh, you were very active here in Birmingham in 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 eighties, and uh, so was Max, of course, and with modesty, so was uh, so was I. Max, uh, Simon, what is your memory of? those um, Elysian days. Um, uh, what do you remember about what we used to do those days? Remind our probably younger listeners, people who forgot, uh, had forgotten what was happening in the 80s. Um, well, uh, I think the 80s for uh, the black community was very important. Uh, the anti-racism movement, I think, was, um, it was crucial, I think, uh, for, our, for our development. Uh, I was in my 20s um, uh, when I returned to Birmingham uh, in the 80s and got active in the middle 80s to the to the late uh, 80s. Got active in the uh, Labour Party uh, mainly. Uh, I was the um, uh, press officer for Birmingham Black Sections. Um, and um, I, I was also the Midlands editor for the Voice newspaper. And I think, I think being, the, the, um, being a journalist for the Black newspaper gave me the space to actually be f uh, upfront and politically, um, politically active. But um, uh, a, a lot of the focus went into um, um, criticising the Labour Party leadership and um, government in, in, in general, uh, and tr trying to break down the um, the, the barriers uh, for black people that um, uh, that was uh, evident in, in the 80s. Um, I, I characterise the situation we were in, particularly for um, um, British-born black people. Um, we're in a situation where we're facing a kind of um, a weak form of uh, apartheid. Uh, and I think for, it was a Conservative government uh, in, in the 80s, and I think they, the Conservative government, or there was, a, there was a, a faction of the government that wanted to regard uh, race as a policing issue. So, you know, we we're a bunch of criminals and we were a problem, and that we, they were to boost up the, uh, the police. And the, um, the anti-racism movement of which the black sections was um, a, a central part, uh, that, that was necessary to um, uh, sort of um, uh, break that, uh, uh, that approach and come up with a, with a new approach. So um, I, you know, I, I'm fairly happy that I was, uh, was a part of that. 
some very different um, scenario from where we are at the moment. When we come to speak about contemporary matters, we can touch on this. But Maxi, mm. I failed to mention that um, one of the things you did, you for many years, you um, ran, was chair, operated the Birmingham Racial Attack Monitoring Unit. You were also very, very active at that time. Remind us of some of the things you used to do with Bravo. <laughs> I know we could be here all day, but we've got about an hour. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, um, the the things the things I, I just want to say um, um, the the um, Simon left out the fact that um, some time back we um, <laughs> a group of activists, including you and myself, we had to launch a, a SOS campaign to rescue Simon from. Northern Ireland. <laughs> you remember when he went over to Northern Ireland? <laughs> and he, 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 there was some some concern, Simon. We were concerned, and um, but you were released after they realised that you weren't a spy. <laughs> I, I laugh because each time I see you, every time I see you, I just remember. When I see you, I remember, and you're my good friend, Simon. I remember a few things. I remember um, your dad. Um, and his butcher shop and his grocery shop at Rookwood Road. We don't have those sort of things now for us for African Caribbean people. We do, you know, I mean, I used to go in there regular and I, it was nice. But, but anyway, the um and the, yes, and I remember the days of the voice. Uh, so I know you very well. <laughs> so um, so where are we? Bramo, Between, you to, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Bramo. Bramo yeah. is Bramo. A, an iconic organization yeah. at the time. Bramo, Bramo, and thanks for mentioning Bramo. Bromo was um, founded. There, there was a, this was an old bit. Do you remember the old building uh, that we had here? Yeah. Yeah. And this is where Bromo gave birth. Was given birth to. And Bromo was established in 1979, 78, because of the Home Office Interdepartmental Report, which highlighted the fact that racialist, racial discrimination. And racial terrorism, as I'd like to call it, because it is, was on the increase. Birmingham was selected because mainly of its high black minority community. And the, 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 the report uh, uh, highlighted the fact that uh, racial harassment was on the increase. And so Birmingham was chosen to, 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 to be the, um, the, 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 the city that would liaise uh, on behalf of the people. So as a result, it was decided or agreed that an organization such as Bromo um, should be established and based within the community, within the community, so that it could serve as a bridge between the community and local authority. Because the, 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 the report uh, um, discovered that um, statutory agencies such as the police, housing department, social services, youth department, they were insensitive of the issues faced by the BME community. Yeah, they, they, they weren't, they, and, and even when, when they, were, uh, they were aware, they were incapable of dealing with the issues. And so, we were established in 1989, and um, up until we operated for a number of years, and minimal funding. Um, uh, but we, the, the funding was precarious, except for the fact that the city funded a casework post, uh, no, a monitoring post. And we had was to fundraise um, people like organizations such as Cadbury and, and, and people like those um, funded us. So, because, you know, you could monitor until the cows come home and you come up with the same answer. So, but, but the, the caseworker post was proactive, help us to, to work with the victim, eh? you know, because many victims don't, don't, and I say victim, because many victims has never go through uh, the corridors of power, like a police station or a court it can be very intimidating. So the caseworker gave um, support to the victim, yeah, and just around the road here, um, one of our, we had a, one of our most historical case um, 
It's called the Beanie Baker, Beanie Baker case, whereby an Asian woman had her uh, hair pulled by racist thugs, white, and 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 nothing was done. So we had was to develop uh, what you call an interagency approach, working with housing departments, social services, you name it. And I could talk, as you said. But the, let me, the final point I want to make about Bromo just now is between uh, 1978, since its launch, until 2010, to, at, his, at, his, at, at, at his demise or closure, we worked with over 30,000, listen to this, I'm going to repeat it, over 30,000 people. Um, um, we work with 5,000 live cases. The rest of cases were by telephone, referrals, and what have you. But that's how impactful Brahma was. Very, very impactful. Won a let lots of awards and stuff like that. We, 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 we This famous case um, um, that we won was um, the, 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 the killing of Alton Manning, who was unlawfully killed in Blake and Earth's prison. Oh, I could go on. I, could I know, Max. Well, Max, yeah. thanks very much. Just yeah. a reminder of uh, some of the activities in the city in the, yeah. in the 1980s and well, 90s. Right. But uh, so we, we, we'll, yeah. we'll probably talk a little as to why right. Brahma went let, into... Let me just say one of the reasons here. Um, what, between 19... You asked me about the 80s and... The, the 19th, 1970s, as far as I'm concerned, and record show that... During the 1970s was the most terrifying days um, for black people in this country. Racial terrorism was on the increase. It was a free-for-all, all all the time. And um, between 1979 and 1981, when Majid Thatcher came to power, um, 31 black and Asian people were murdered in this country without anything done. 13... 13 dead, nothing said. That was the theme with the um, the, the London um, scenario. But yeah, so it was rough times. So we had to develop anti-racist organizations, whether we like it or not. Well, Max, thanks for reminding us about uh, what was happening in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we're going to take another music break now, and then when we return, we'll, someone will ask you about uh, having moved to the, the great city, some of your activities there, okay? And having listened to Newt Ingram, we're now listening to the great Sarah Vaughan.
in which um, she's <laughs> referred to the divine Dinah Washington and broken hearted melody. Well, Simon, you you left us and went to uh, the big shining uh, the city and the uh, the shining city. Um, tell us about your activities, um, Simon, in in London. Knowing you, you wouldn't have um, uh, um, stopped your activities. Um, yeah, well, I, I left because I lost my job at the Voice newspaper. I was unemployed for a while. Um, and that was partly because of the activity that I was uh, in, engaged in. I think the Voice wanted to have a, a good relationship with the city council. And uh, <laughs> I thought, uh, as an activist and, and in some of, some of the writing I did in, in the Voice, I wanted to reflect how um, upset black people were with the city council. Um, so I, I had to leave London to find a job. I actually um, f first went to, um, went to Cambridge and worked for the civil service, worked for the um, British Antarctic Survey, mm -hmm. and eventually moved into um, uh, London and, and worked in, in Whitehall. The work I did was, was public relations. Uh, but I uh, also... Um, I also left the Labour Party at that, around that time. What year was that? Because uh, uh, it's very significant. A lot of people were leaving the Labour Party. Was this a time of the uh, Iraq War? Uh, it wasn't then. It was be before. Because of, yeah, before then. Before it was, a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Got to be. Because of Tony Blair, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, Blair wanted to, uh, came up with new Labour. He didn't particularly like what was called their Clause 4, which was about... Um, Nationalisation clause, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so nationalisation is a socialist um, <laughs> uh, agenda. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, I, I left the Labour Party. When I was in London. And the flower for the, re the red flag support, the flower uh, substituting for the red flag, of course, which is yeah. symbolic. <laughs> so a sort of a, a marketing change for yes, um, of course. Uh, the Labour Party. Um, so. Um, uh, I, I still wanted to be active, uh, so I got active in the, the union movement. This was mainly the National Union of Journalists. Um, and I was working with um, Mark Wadsworth, who's um, well known as a, a black section. Of course, activist. of course. Um, another person is Jim Boomella, who's um, uh, in the NUJ, is not as well known uh, in, in Birmingham. Uh, one of the things that we, need, we wanted to do was to form... Uh, to have representation, black representation, uh, on the executive of the um, National Union of Journalists. There was a, a forum, a uh, kind of talking shop, uh, but um, we all campaigned uh, at a place like the conference of the union to actually have a, a more formal organisation called the Black Members Council that would have representation on the, um, uh, on the executive of the NEJ, and, and, and that, that we managed. I, I should also say that we... That also on the um, uh, also we worked with Lionel Morrison, uh, and Lionel Morrison um, worked for the, um, the the then Commission for Racial Equality. He's a man I knew quite well actually. Some people suspected that he was a spy for um, the South African government, but that's another matter. <laughs> Go on. Um, I'm not surprised, but I mean he was he did some good work um, uh, in, in the NUJ. Of course. Um, all good spies, good work. <laughs> <laughs> As I saw from, uh, I'm just watching recently, uh, Stone, the, the, the film Stone about Stone 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 Stone. So, Sorry to interrupt you, Sam. You go on. Um, mm. uh, so, um, uh, that, that was my main focus in the, in, in, in the 90s. Uh, later on, um, I, I got involved in campaigns against the uh, Iraq war. Um, I also uh, eventually rejoined the Labour Party, and I rejoined because of the success of uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, I rejoined around 2000. Uh, so you're a Corbynist of salmon. Uh, that, that's why I joined, rejoined the Labour Party. So, okay. yeah, I, I'm actually a, a member of Jeremy Corbyn's constituency. I'm in uh, Islington North. What is he doing? Um. Well, that's, that's complicated. At the moment, he's, he's not a, officially a, a Labour MP. Well, do you run into him? Well, yeah, I mean, he comes to, um, uh, to, to uh, party meetings, so, uh, yeah. Um, so, but but um, I, th I, think, I think Jeremy Corbyn inspired a, a lot of people to, to rejoin. A lot of people who were active mm. on the left in the 80s rejoined because of uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, I think a lot of black yeah. people were also interested in, in Corbyn and he, and he yeah. had a focus on, on race equality 
Um, uh, and um, it's kind of interesting at the time that he came t to the fore uh, in, in that um, the was it the 2015 e election when um, uh, those women who were in charge of the Scottish Nationalists, the Welsh Nationalists, uh, um, and there was another party I, I can't remember, that, that they had a lot of um, uh, public support and sympathy. And they basically um, had a, 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 um, a progressive, socially, social democratic agenda. Well, so uh, this, they are so, the, the women from Saltall, Saltall women. The Black Sisters. Are you? Black Sisters. Black Sisters. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I, I, I didn't have a lot of contact with South Hall Black Sisters. I thought it was the, you were referring to them. No, no, it wasn't to them. But it was the political parties. Um, and, and so Jeremy Corbyn came um, at a time when I think the general public was sceptical about the, the, the sort of dominant politics, the sort of Labour and Conservative mm -hmm. uh, uh, politics. Um, but I said, um, you know, he, he also aspired a lot of, uh, yeah. of, of black people to join. So that Just to strengthen that, that, my son, who hadn't voted for a year, for the first time he voted, was because of Jeremy Corbyn. And he's a very intelligent young man with a lots of qualification. If the wind blows, he blames someone. So I, we saw sort of some serious discussion, disagreement. But Carbin, even yesterday, he was telling me that Carbin, he's not going. I don't think he's going to vote because Carbin isn't there. Okay. Well, we're going to talk it's a, 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 about some of the grassroots acti activities uh, in a minute. But what? what but clearly, you have been involved with some grassroots activities um, and we can look a little later on as to why the Corbyn agenda failed if, if fail it, it has but uh, tell us a little more about some of the grassroots activities you're involved with uh, as opposed to being involved with the Labour Party and I, I did get involved in a, an organization called um, Global African uh, Congress Global African Congress UK um, they're, they're an organization that's in, um, inspired by by Garveyism. What, what attracted me was their work on um, reparations for slavery. I mean, they, they wanted reparations for slavery and for, or, and for colonialism. Um, th there was some dis discussion about repar uh, reparations in, in, in the UN uh, at the time. Uh, the UN helped to organise a meeting that I think the first was in Barbados. No, no, no. The first was South Africa. Barbados was the conference, the world, second world conference came after. Because yeah. uh, I was at South, in South Africa, Durban, you see. Right. But then, then the second spin after that was in Barbados. I didn't go. Right. Yeah. Uh, and there was, there was some pledges that came out of oh, yes. Barbados and the Global African Congress came about as a result of that. But the Congress it was a global organisation. and uh, Simon, what effect did the, the, uh, that move? And I think reparation is such an important issue that we should speak about it. For example, as long ago as um, 1960, when the great Franz Fanon wrote his um, Rich Earth, he mentions reparation. So it had been an issue on the agenda. Oh, what progress did you make in terms of the organisation you were involved with? Cousin? Well, I think it's mainly to um, uh, to publicise it, to get it into people's consciousness. Um, I mean, it, the, the work I did was mainly getting round with other people, to discuss what to do. I mean, I, I did some publicity for uh, for, for the Congress. Um, and so I think it became more of an issue amongst uh, political people within uh, the black community. Um, I, I, that was happened at the same time when governments were considering the issue of reparations. So CARICOM took, has taken up the idea of uh, uh, reparations. Um, and um, as I said, it was you know, discussed at, um, uh, at the UN. So um, CARICOM, which is the um, um, uh, Caribbean community, it's an economic um, uh, 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 a regional organisation of Car English-speaking Caribbean. Chair um, Professor Beckles. Yeah, Professor Beckles was the chair of, of chaired the, Still is, yeah. the the campaign, um, and um, Caribbean governments were actually thinking about um, uh, coming up with a, a legal challenge to the yeah, UK yeah. In, in order to uh, address the issue of rep reparations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seven. Can I just? The, mm. Clearly, uh, the death of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matters movement made a qualitative change in um, 
grassroots activities and, and activities generally. Maxi, how do you see what's happening with um, the, the whole issue and the impact the, the death of George Floyd and the, and the Black Lives Matter had with issues like reparation and other issues? I think it's quite, that's quite an important thing, actually. We're still, we're, we're still uh, undergoing, if that's a good way of putting it, the consequences of um, the Black Lives Matter movement is still going and George Floyd's death. How do, how do you see that as it impacts the, the struggles you have been engaged in for so many decades? Yeah, okay, let me just go back to uh, the Durban Conference, uh, 2001 World Conference on um, xenophobia and racism, which was held in South Africa in 2001, attended by 27,000 uh, people from across the globe. Britain sent a lot, lots of delegation gets there. I was there as well. So was people like Lee Jasper. There was people like Fidel Castro. <laughs> people like <laughs> you're putting Lee and Fidel in the same. No, 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 no. So, no, no. I know. No, I'm no, just teasing I'm you, saying, Maxi. <laughs> and Maxi Hills, and also um, what's her name? Um, um, I, 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 one of the greatest things there for me was marching with um, Jesse uh, Jackson. No, 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 uh, Professor. God. This woman, the, what's her name? Um, Vernon Shepherd. No, she was she was a, the one that that the sold that brothers. Who, the, what's her name? Uh, oh, Angela uh, Davis. Angela uh, Davis. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Angela Davis. With Angela Davis, and uh, because we support, we walk, we, uh, we march with ten thousand uh, South African um, youths, the for the party Mandela's party, ten thousand we we march, and the, the music was so. Impressive, your head swollen and big as this. And the other thing for me was holding hands with, with people who you never, we haven't met. I don't know. And um, but one of the greatest fa failure for that for me was when I tried to uh, shake hands. Uh, so no, take a photograph of Angela Davis when um, after a, a, a seminar which was attended by um, Winnie Mandela because uh, I met Winnie for the second time there and that the, the theme of the conference and, and uh, J jesse and all them people were there you know can just, name, just name reverend jesse jackson, jackson, yeah. jesse jackson. M uh, max you can jump there but most uh, yeah, of our listeners I, probably I doesn't do. yeah, know and, I'm the proud of, and um i saw the back of bishop tutu never get to talk to him but just his back a man who visited I, birmingham many occasions yeah of yeah course. he was I, I, I actually spoke no, to him when he was yeah. in birmingham and also <laughs> saw the back of the um the then UN General Secretary at the time, the black guy, what's his Coffee name? Coffee Annan. Co Coffee Annan, okay. yes. A great, a great man. He run one of our, our base group. So, the, but the theme of conference, and, and by the way, um, it, Britain was represented. Our delegation was led by Amos. Um, what's her name? What title? Valerie, is? Valerie um, Amos. Uh, Baroness Amos. Baroness Amos. Now, Amos. now master, led, master of one of the colleges of Oxford. Yeah, she, she led our delegation, but hey, guess what happened? <laughs> I only, well, I don't know for other people, I only saw her once. You saw the back of her again. <laughs> no, when we were upstairs in a building up by, in downtown um, Durban. But that, one of the things that upset me big time in Durban was the, the, the posture of the begging street children. They, 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 they begged in a way where it's just so painful because they lean in a particular way and humble in a way that it, it stays with me. It's, it stays with me. I don't, I've never seen people so humbled, uh, you know, so that, that was, but let me just go to the theme. Uh, the, the theme of the conference was against racism and xenophobia. That's why so many people came out, some as big guns, although Britain never, Britain should have sent someone more, not to be little um, Valerie Amos, but we, sh we should have had more senior representative representing Britain at the time. But guess what? The issue of race, uh, of reparation was a big issue why both America and Britain were low keyed in the represented, government representation that they sent because it was really quite interesting to see the, 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 the thing. And, and I, I also, we also met um, Professor Dudley Thompson. Thompson was Jamaica ambassador um, to, to, um, to South Africa. And I never forget one of the things he said to me about, not to me, to us in the base group about reparation. He said, listen, 
Someone asks, why does the issue of reparation always raises its head so many times? It never goes away. And his explanation, Dr. Thompson, was, you see, reparation is like a ginger tree. He described it as a ginger tree. He says a ginger tree always seems as if it's going to die, but then it just come back alive. So he described reparation as a ginger tree, never dies, always fade away, then it comes back. And perhaps, and, and I like that explanation because no matter what happened, no matter the criticism that we get, reparation will always present itself um, because it's a wrong, it's supposed to be repaying a wrong that has been done, which has not been addressed by this country, France, America, or whatever. It will never go away. Maxi, uh, Maxi clearly, but Black Lives Matter uh, so uh, we'll campaign yeah. and, and yeah. the death of George Floyd, okay. the two are connected. That has had an impact in those issues. How do you see, yeah. generally speaking, the impact of the, uh, of the Black Lives Matter uh, in general, and also in particular, what do you think that has reflected on the issue of reparation? I think it is one of the, it's one of the best thing I could ever see um, that happens over a number of years. But for us as black people, we failed uh, to capitalize on it. And the people I'm going to blame right now is, first and foremost, it was an ideal opportunity in our history for the churches to throw their support behind black history, but behind um, Black Lives Matter. And when you have people like this Labour leader that we have, what's his name again? Uh, Stom. Stom. Going to refer to... Um, Sir K. Stom. Sir K. Stom are referring to Black Lives Matter. But much I, thought you, much I thought you liked him some no, time ago. I, you and I went to, to Leeds, <laughs> and we went to that meeting, that AGM, and I campaigned for him. And I yeah, argued and, against and him. I, and, uh, yeah, and I used to sit uh, on a group in London. I shouldn't uh, have said that in radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I forgot I, we were on yeah, live radio. I, yeah. <laughs> and I sat with, used to my, my chair with... with, with, with um, What's her name? Um, um, Lawrence. Uh, 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 what's her name, Lawrence? Uh, oh, 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 Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Baroness Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence. he used to be our chair at, at this particular group. And I used to accompany some people from Nottingham down to those meetings. So I always look at him as a great guy. Somebody you know, and he would be. But he turns out very disappointing. When he's got mentioned... He, he was the different, Maxi. Ma oh, Max, wasn't he different when he was sitting as a shadow member of uh, <laughs> uh, of Corbyn's um, cabinet? Wasn't yes, he, a very different quiet, guy? he was quiet because okay. he's a snake. <laughs> Max, we're in live. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm a member of the Labour <laughs> Party. You're, you're welcome. You can, yeah, you're allowed I, to say I, that. I don't care. I don't care <laughs> because I'm not going to be a lord anymore because Jeremy Carvin is there. Well, uh, I yeah, want to be a lord. I'm, I'm not sure, and, Max. Anyway, anyway, one, way of, <laughs> and, one way of making it is probably by uh, kicking asses. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, anyway, um, wait, I lost my thought. When he mentioned, when the death of, um, uh, of Floyd and the rise of black uh, lives matter came and he as a labor leader coming to tell people that it's not a movement it's a moment that's what he said you know i could not believe it and since that it turns me off so philip for us we didn't capitalize on black lives matter there's still time to do it but it shouldn't have to take the death of um the murder the murder uh, because it was murder, well, uh, of, the lynching, of, if you uh, like, lynching, uh, if you like, well, names yeah, to, to make that become apparent. Because right now, racial terrorism is on the increase. Uh, Max, the it, Max with, wasn't there a difference with what happened with George Floyd? Uh, black people are being lynched, uh, and incidentally, we should mm -hmm. mention this great uh, uh, black journalist, um, uh, with a Getting old, sermon. Come on, the great Ida, Ida, uh, the black 19th century uh, female journalist. Three men, a bunch of a bunch of sexists. Uh, we can't bring back her name. The great anti-lynching uh, journalist campaigner. She was probably the first uh, Ida Ida Lynch. Oh, yeah. uh, now she was. Uh, uh, she's not as well known actually as no. say as say Frederick Douglass, the 
great, great oh, Frederick great Douglass Frederick in the 19th Douglas. century. Yeah, there you are, Max, you're saying. But she was an extraordinarily brave woman. She had to mm. run away from um, South Carolina because she said she wrote things like uh, all of this talk about black men raping white women oh, is yes. nonsense. They, they, it was very all of no black man would be stupid enough to um, to have a, a, a sexual relationship with a white woman if it wasn't consensual because they know the consequences. And, and she had to run away from uh, yeah. South Carolina and continued a lot. But yeah. it, her name is Edison. But you no, know, what I'm saying is that clearly black people have been lynched for a long time. Yeah. But but the point I'm wishing to make, Max, if I will, if yeah. I may, is is that the difference with the lynching of um, um, George Floyd because of the wonderful uh, young woman who had the presence of mind. Oh my God! The uh, what the pre- uh, what the presence of mind um, to, to film um, to, um, to film it. Uh, the world saw it, and it. I my think God. it changed. Don't you think that it changed the consciousness of um, so many people? Probably yeah, we and I are old, so yeah. we were. I was safe at home because of COVID yeah. during the march. But a lot of young people took to the street in this country. Oh yes. Well, I. I t- well, I'm not young, but I took to the street. I was told that to. You're I braver just, than I am, Maxi. No, I wear my mask. <laughs> I didn't go. I didn't mix it in the city centre, but up King's Eat, there was a big march up there, and I I wore my march, tried to keep away from the crowd, but I presented myself, um, because, as Bob Marley says, Philip, um, I'm listening, in, in, I'm listening. in the in his music, as I raised at the conference the other day, in Talking Blues. Who is going to stay at home yeah, I was gonna when, take that when, that. when the freedom fighters are fighting? So, you know, <laughs> I didn't uh, I did, That's didn't one of my favorite Bob Marley. I was going to take yeah, it, but I, yeah, I, I, I rushed out. That's why at the I conference, the people felt the way they did when I said that, because I don't think. So, so my apologies. Sorry. No, go on. No, 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 no. Uh, um, Malcolm X used to say, Maxi, in a highly technical society, I, there are highly technical I, I, mistakes. I'm, sorry, sorry, sorry uh, I can't. So Max is having one of his many uh, Sa- I- 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 emergencies. Salmon, you, 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 what, what do you think, Salmon, is the implication oh, well, um, of, of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement? I was going on a, a, a march in London mm-hmm. uh, that was mainly uh, consisting of um, uh, young black people. They look, mm-hmm. look like students. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what was impressive about the march is that it, it was organised within a couple of days yeah. on WhatsApp. The march went from Oxford Street to the um, um, the, the U.S. Embassy. It was, on, it was on a weekend, so there weren't many people in the embassy. But uh, um, but what what was impressive about it was so many young people uh, got involved in that uh, march. Yes. Uh, very quickly, and that that was following the, um, the, the Black Lives Matter and George Floyd. Um, and um, one thing that struck me was that um, um, after we. And of course, uh, as they say in a highly technical society, yes. there are highly technical the mistakes. The uh, go on, Simon, you were saying uh, about after, the young people marching. Uh, uh, after I had the, 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 uh, um, the talks at the uh, embassy, people um, went back through uh, Oxford Street. And um, so some people decided to get on top of a, a, a bus stop mm. and demonstrate on top of the bu- on top of the bus stop. With that, I mean, that kind of struck me um, uh, that um, young people uh, had done that. And I think that, that was because of the Black Lives Matter movement yeah, that the whole publicity movement. got, the, 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 the support it got. Uh, it was able to mobilise a lot of um, young young people, which is not easy to do nowadays. But what is interesting, Max? Max, Max, what is interesting, Max? Isn't it? Is that and the difference is with what happened with um, George Floyd. Whatever may have happened in the black churches, there were literally millions of white people, young, all of all ages, who campaigned. Oh, don't you think there's okay, a, yes. a qualitative change here? Yes, um, I was most impressed. But um, and this is one of the reasons why this takes me back to um, black history um, being taught in schools. And one of the reasons why the establishment don't actually encourage the teaching of black history, Philip, is no, because it would, it, would, it would ignite revolution, not necessarily to tear down buildings and stuff, but it would reignite this awareness that, that of humanity, which I saw came out of those people. They were not just black, they were white, they were Asians, they were everybody, everybody's conscience came to play. Now, the thing about it is, one of the things for me, I don't care what anybody wants to say, but I'll tell you this. One of the highlights of the entire thing for me was the, the, the tearing down and dumping of the statue of Edward Colston, the man who 
actually was responsible for Coulson is name. Colston, C O L S T O N. Isn't it Coulson? Colston. Uh, Colston. Edward C O L S T O N, the former slave master, a slave trader, who murdered and and lived. To, you know, Bristol was built up and um and and the money, the blood money from enslavement. So when people is gonna tell me like the Tory, like the the, the, the former Home Secretary, what's her name? Gonna say that people are mad to do this and blame. Is it Theresa May? Oh, there have, there have been many of them. Pretty sir. Pa Pretty Patel. Uh, oh yes, uh, she's gonna talk about a uh, rebellion and all the rest of that. You know, I mean, I tell you what, this is something I was so proud of. When these guys tore down that statue in particular, people ask me about Churchill and um, all the rest. One of them was racist, but this one in particular, this one, Colston, deserved. Yeah, he, eh? he profited. He profited from slavery. Uh, slavery. Um, but here, no. Here, the point about him as well. Not just him. He uh, said no, there, no, no. There is but, no, but, but Max, the point, Max, there is no institution in no, the society. I, I know uh, which hasn't profited directly yeah, from but, slavery. But what Simon is saying, him in particular. Because one of the things he said, one of the things he, said, he did, the people said that he used his money to good purpose. Hear this. And he built hospitals, he built schools, he built, and over about 20 streets were named after him. He had some, one of the biggest influence you could ever think. So he, he was worthy of being torn down and make an example to well, yeah, yeah. There, there's the irony in in UK and other history. Yeah. In that we're supposed to celebrate these people. These people are kind of honoured. <laughs> yes. When they, they got to that position because of the the, the crime the of the terrorism, because yeah. of the crime, yeah, inhumanity of, mm. of slavery. But must just make the point that Coulson is, and they were right, of course, in my judgment, to mm. take uh, take down his statue of the black people because they're more powerful in terms of their numbers in America, they're, they're, they've been more successful. They've taken down um, the, the statue of Robert E. Mm -hmm. Lee, who's mm -hmm. the great, great hero of uh, the Southern races. And he's, uh, 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 the of, uh, uh, of course, the leader the in this, during the Civil War. They've taken down his statue and they've now replaced it. You, you'll be pleased to know the, mm -hmm. uh, the statue for black women. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see what happens in, in Bristol. But uh, we can instance um, Cecil Rhodes, for example. Oh, who, yes. Who, was there was criminal. no one. I, I, I'm sure he's, he was far more criminal than uh, Andrew Coulson. Uh, not Andrew Coulson. Andrew Coulson is my good friend. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, than, uh, uh, than Coulson. But um, he, uh, I, I'm, I, I know that there are some well issues that. raised about uh, Rhodes uh, in at the university. But uh, you know, that's an, uh, I'm not sure where they've got to at this one. But that, we'll come back to that after um, a, a, a break. They say that grub comes before morality, so we need to have a break. <laughs> OK. All right.
Uh, you've been listening to the remarkable uh, fusion of Taj Mahal, uh, the great American blues singer, and Tiumani Diabate, uh, Africa's most greatest choral player. And that was called Queen Bee. And it's on, it's on a label uh, called uh, Anibal, I think. But uh, anyway. Taj Mahal and uh, dear, dear man, dear uh, gentlemen, before um, the, the break, we were talking about um, Black Lives Matter and um, reparation. And uh, of course, uh, um, Taj Mahal and dear um, uh, Taj Mahal and um, dear Bhati combines in their fusion very well, the America and, uh, and African reparations. So, so, Simon, you're telling us, what, what do you think is, what I, when you look at what's been happening on our television, for example, never before have I seen so many um, non-white faces. Uh, and um, clearly there's a cultural um, effect of um, the Black Lives Matter and the George Floyd. How do you see all of this? I think it came about at a time when there's been a shift globally. I mean, perhaps it was um, following the reparations movement, also following um, the, the, the important trial in, in Kenya uh, about reparations for uh, colonialism, for the kind of uh, well torture, basically, that, that, that uh, the UK engaged in during the colonial era in Kenya. And um, uh, Kenyans uh, uh, won that. So, so it seems to be a, a change in in consciousness uh, globally um, uh, that, that um, the West and the UK has had to uh, respond to. Um, I, th I, think, I think Black Lives Matter is, is important in terms of the, the, the fact that it gives us a chance to challenge issues that we, in the past it was difficult to challenge. So um, to, to a certain extent, uh, racism was institutionalised in, in parts of um, uh, the, the mythology of the UK. Um, uh, and that's exemplified by uh, st the statues of Rhodes. You know, uh, you know, we're supposed to think, think this good guy, um, uh, this guy's good, even though he's engaged in, in slavery. So, so he gave it gave us that opportunity. Um, it also led to some changes I I in the U.S. in terms of uh, policing. So the, there were policy changes uh, that, that that made it more difficult. It, in theory, uh, for police officers to um, uh, bully and kill uh, people in general and, and, and black people. Um, uh, uh, over here in the Labour Party, it, it sparked off a debate. So in, in my party in, in, in Islington, um, there was a debate about about black history and uh, we don't know enough about black history. So, I mean, it, it, in fact, I think it was white people who put, put forward the idea that uh, a list of, of books about black history should be circulated amongst uh, its members. So, so in, in terms of the mythology um, that, um, that Europe has, uh, Black Lives Matter uh, it enabled uh, us to challenge that. Um, also for me... Uh, in Islington, it, it, it raised the issue of, of stop and search. So the, the Islington party got involved with um, a, um, a, a group called uh, Islington Stop and Search uh, Community Monitoring Group. And that's a group of people, ordinary people, who meet with uh, Islington police on a regular basis to, to, to oversee, uh, oversee is the wrong word, actually, to... to, to, to attempt to make the police more accountable about how they use uh, stop and search. So the party got involved uh, in that. And that was after um, a stop and search incident just down the road from where I lived, where um, uh, police were attending an incident, a black guy was walking past and they just grabbed him and um, uh, uh, as if he was involved in, in, in the uh, incident, which he wasn't. Um, and um, yeah, that, that result resulted in a, in a, a campaign that the uh, local party got involved in. So in, in those three areas, um, uh, it, it was important. I mean, there, there are other things about Black Lives Matter that, that um, uh, are problematic. Um, a number of things, actually, about Black Lives Matter that, that was problematic. Um, and you know, we, we've seen that with the revelation that um, some of the monies was misspent in Black Lives Matter. I remember when I tried to, to donate... In some, this country? This is in America. But when I tried to donate some money to, to Black Lives Matter in America, uh, I, I, I went on a website and, and, and I thought, well, I couldn't work out who it was I was 
given money to. It seemed to go to a Democratic Party pot that they may spend on, on, on black issues. I wasn't, wasn't too sure about who who I was giving the money to, and I eventually didn't give any money because because of that. So um, there, there, there was some some degree of, of outside control of um, uh, Black Lives Matter that was, that was going on. But it did, did give um, uh, our community uh, opportunities. Simon, both you and Max have been very much involved with grassroots um, uh, issues and seen the absolute value of that. I, I'm not quite sure about, there's always a problem with funding arrangements in the, uh, in the United States, isn't it? But isn't the, the significance of Black Lives Matter as compared to, say, the Black Power movement led by the great Stokely Carmichael, uh, uh, Kwame Ture, and the civil rights movement led by um, the incomparable Martin Luther King, isn't the difference there that Black Lives Matter has seen work at the grassroots as integral to what they're doing? And as, as, isn't that a significant change with Black Lives Matter? What do you see, Max? Yeah, they, um, yes, let's go Black Lives Matter. I had, and I say I had, the privilege, the opportunity to um, um, what you call it? Um, to be the host to the the woman who we're talking about, the the one, the lead, the, the founder. Yes. Mm. In Birmingham, I was I, I host star. The drum didn't see if I remember. Yeah, I, I host star. I was present there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I host star at the church at uh, Cannon Street, my church, and I host star at the drum. So our names start with a C. What's her name? Um, I can't I forget. recall her name. I know. I know the woman. Yeah, she um, is, she's been. Uh, it's been suggested that uh, she's been involved. She bought a big house, and the money was misappropriated, and what have you, and um, you know, and also the fact that another side to it is some people didn't like her because they reckon that the people who brought her here were. Those, it's a gay movement that brought her here in it, uh, women, female, uh, gay movement. And uh, yes, um, we heard bad things about, um, problematic things about them. But, you know, the other thing we have to do is to also give Black Lives Matter and because the benefit of the doubt because they became so, the movement became so dynamic and so influential and, as you said, gave uh, black people, a lease of life to to, to champion uh, equality. So people would be negative. Some people, right-wing people, because if you have government people are being so negative to them, what then you expect? And so the rumors spread, and the press wasn't too kind either to, to them either. So any little thing, our politicians weren't kind to them because it frightened the daylights out of them. So I'd like to give Black Lives Matter and its leadership, membership, things could have improved. But like anything else, you have to start from uh, 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 somewhere. It needed structure, but what it did for me, it brought a message of hope, a message for God's sake, a message of hope. And I go right back to it again. It gave the black communities uh, 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 opportunities, uh, plural, like Philip say, more black faces has been on television than ever, and, and and it's there. But it's for us to, as I remember one, one MP telling us, when it was at Parliament once, she says, you have to harass them. You have to harass the system. You have to kick down the door. Yeah, that's what she said. She says, in order to get anywhere, uh, Simon Woolley was giving uh, some thing at the Lords and I was I went down there and this woman who was given it was uh, an MP who chaired a committee uh, home office committee which I was sitting at and she says in order to get anywhere in this country she was telling the black students who was being released she said you have to harass them meaning the establishment and what have you we haven't taken the opportunity enough to harass this system because we ease off you know, well, well, Philip, I know you want to come in. A lot of things, you know, we as a people, as black people, the problem with us, and I hope for 2023, we change. We're too nice to other people. We're not nice to our own people. We need to step the pace up and use 
the tool of racism more. We're not capitalizing on it. It's a reason why it's not a level playing field. And we as black people are letting them off the hook. This needs to be intensified. The church is missed up, as I said, a big opportunity. They should throw their weight behind Black Lives Matter. Where are we going to get another movement like this that was supported by so much people across the globe? It becomes global, and we still haven't managed to tap into it and maximize the benefits. Maxi, during the new year, hopefully, when we have, when we return to the FM, we'll yeah. start inviting church members. And we that is a, a, a dialogue. I've recently written to Bishop um, Webley, congratulating him and his OB and, uh, uh, and suggesting to him that we need to, to have a dialogue about what, what I described as the people operating at the lower frequencies of our society, another mm -hmm. word for grassroots. But the point Simon makes is very important because there's a long history of um, financial matters being used to attack black organizations. So we yeah, see this no starting with, uh, with Marcus Garvey. That's how they, they, uh, mm -hmm. that's how they, they, they attacked him. Uh, uh, we've seen this with um, uh, the, 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 well, if we, if without being parochial, if we yeah. see it with, uh, with, uh, with what happened with, with, I was going to say, with the, 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 the nation of Islam with Farrakhan mm -hmm. uh, being told, said that he's living a rich life. And incidentally, when I visited Chicago, because I heard this kind of talk about Farrakhan living a life of wealth and all of that. I specifically, I specifically went to visit uh, Farrakhan's home just to see what people are talking about. And of course, when you go, what you see is that he was living in, no, he was living in the same kind of house as all the other houses around. And they weren't mansions, they were large houses, but they weren't, you know, palatial or anything like that and when you read reports. So there's, a, there, there, it's not new, the business you have mentioned, uh, Max, what's pr probably happening with local authorities and black organization closing them down for what they call financial irregularities and incidentally a very good friend of mine who was chairman of the West Midlands county councils said to me Philip whenever uh, a local authority carries out an investigation uh, of that kind is always political so uh, we know this and we really must be very um, skeptical about what this has said. So we've sp spoken a lot about uh, those wider issues. Let, let, let's, if we, if we can change the subject now to probably more contemporary matters. Of course, we have um, we've all been um, crying about the death of the great um, uh, Pele, of course. Uh, and uh, I, I, I myself will tell you a little about my first um, experience uh, with Pele. But what, what do you guys um, think about Pele? And uh, Pele are messy? Well, well <laughs> about Pele, I, I remember when I was very young, uh, in, in the 60s, I can't remember which World Cup it was when they were talking. It may have been the 66 World Cup, I don't remember that much. No, the 66, you, I, what age would you have been in 66? I, I think I would have been about seven. Oh, watching the World Cup? I, do, I don't remember the 66 World Cup at I all. Do. I remember the 70 World Cup. I don't remember the 66 World Cup. But I do remember my mum and my dad talking about um, uh, Pele and Eusebio. Um, no. they, they were I remember you they, they were Most examples. Don't remember you say the Portuguese yeah. striker. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he, he uh, played for Portugal. And uh, uh, um, in, in the way they they spoke, I understood them to mean that they were um, uh, um, examples of black excellence. And um, in fact, doing well in in a world that's run by white people, basically, as as, as the um, the World Cup was. Um, so, so that yeah, that, that that's uh, and I was young. How I remember Pele, and uh, um, uh, I remember this, this, the seventies uh, World Cup when most of us, most black Mexico. people, support in Mexico. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. most black people supported Brazil, uh, and was very happy to see um, uh, Brazil Brazil win. Um, Against Italy, of course. Uh, it, yeah, it, it was it was four one as I remember. That it was, was four one I, indeed. Young as I was, I was surprised mm. about the fact that Brazil beat Italy by four one. But mm. it was four one. Yeah, and it, it, it's interesting when we're talking. We need to really remember, focus, try to focus on exactly why was black people so engaged um, with wanting um, that sort of victory because during the seventies. It was one of the worst times in the history of, of Britain for black people. I can tell you that. Yeah, we, there's written proof. And anything to lift, anything to uplift us, 
ignites black people. It's like I remember when I was um, a boy in London in 1960s, late mid 1960s, and Ray Charles was ru um, ruling the airwaves. I can't stop loving you and all those tunes. And my head used to swell like this. 1964, I think, with, with um, um, Mahmoud Ali um, knocking out Henry Cooper when his face the boy get up and want to want to knock down um, um, Ali. And Ali get up and just boom, boom, boom. He knocked down some black ones too. And, yeah, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm trying to tell you, for me, as a black youngster, Growing up with Nelson Mandela in prison, with our heroes, stif I mean, in incarcerated, those were the things that really brings us, gives us the kind of a, uh, it, I'm looking for a word to describe it, a pride, pride, and then Pelly came along. It, it's so much pride. So we, we mustn't. Just talk about Brazil winning. Winning was good, but it's how it made black people feel and uplift. Uh, and, and, yeah, and how and how Brazil won against yeah. um, against Italy. The way they yeah. played, yeah. it was it was like magic. Yes, <laughs> yes. It to like me. I remember one of the time, Pelle just went after he scored enough. He said he just passed the ball to. Oh, I forget what's his name. I said, you take that one there. Carlos, Carlos Alberto. Yes. And, the, the you know, captain. it was style. It was like poetry in motion. That's what I said, Max. Because yes. I always yes. think about Brazil playing as yeah. being like but, a, a ballet. Uh, mm, the, the yeah. ballet. But, 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 sorry. So you're the host. So you're, no, neutral, go on, go on. you're neutralized in a way. Let me just say this. One other thing I don't like, and which I take, I wrote on, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Linking about this. What what I think is, when people gonna compare and somebody mentioned Messi. I did. Yeah, I just yeah. said Messi. Uh, Pelé or Messi. Messi. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Maradona. Maradona. And, and it goes like this. Maradona. Yes. It goes like this. Pelé. He's one of the. He's among one of the greatest footballers. G O A T in the world. I said. Mm -mm. I know. Say no. He was it and is the one. Because you see, what people try to do, what people try to do is to compare them. There was no comparison. So, so but, but, you, that, you, because but, what they do, they, they try. Eh? So, but, but, well, but, well, but, must finish. No, yeah. there they, they no, you know, no comparison. He wasn't one of the greatest. He was the greatest. Because if you say he was one of the greatest, it means you're mixing it to try to give preference treatment. No, I'm not into it, but everybody has their own. Well, I, I think the, the question as to whether, technically, as a footballer, yeah. was Pele better than Messi is a, is a it's question. It's not relevant one. Yes. It's, it's <laughs> but, we, we as black people yeah. are going to say Pele all the time. Yes. But if we're being objective, <laughs> Max, uh, ask the question, uh, uh, Max, was Messi more... Salmon, isn't, no, uh, no. isn't Messi... Max, Yes, okay. isn't uh, Messi to be seen as as uh, what we used to call a great white hope? Am I wrong in that? Hope. I like the bit about hope. Well, well you're, you're saying there's <laughs> a long history you're, you're, of the great white well, you're hope. Saying, more to do with boxing. Know, know, you're you're saying that, that, that I'm the, not saying it. I'm putting it to you. <laughs> that the debate, you could argue, the debate isn't really about who's better, but you know, white people have got their hero and they want to knock that's the black you, hero the point off its. Um, yeah. 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 Is there some truth in that? Is there some truth in that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because let me let me, no, let, it's let, me difficult. Salmon, let me share an experience it's with you. And during the World Cup in 1970, I was a university student in Southampton. I think I've shared it with you, but I'll share it with the listeners. And I um, watch the final between uh, Brazil and um, Italy uh, in a, a room uh, uh, at Southern University full of um, white um, uh, students, and there were only two non-white students, myself and an, a, and an Asian girl. Then uh, we were very politically conscious. Black power was at its height in 1970. And I recall very, very clearly that when um, Brazil scored, um, there was an enormous amount of noise in the room and silence, and the noise came from me and the Asian girl, and the silence, that room was totally and completely silent. It was a very interesting experience, actually, that, um, that people 
uh, related racially, those white people in that room related racially, they, they were silent. If I can put it to you, and you can come in, I believe the world has now changed. I believe if I was, uh, if myself and an Asian girl were sitting in a room and Brazil was playing Italy and Brazil scored, there would be a difference. I think there'd be a lot of those white people cheering. So I think our world have changed, but, that, mm. but uh, am no, I right, though? Uh, has, has the world changed? Uh, uh, yeah, I think the world sense, has. Yes. I think the world has changed. I don't know, I'm asking you. And, and I, and I d d don't think it's, it's, it's like that, although you could put it, you know, you miss the white hope and not ped uh, a black um, icon off, off his pedestal. You could see it in that way, but I, I don't feel that, to be honest. Um, I think there's a genuine question about Messi and, and, and Pele. And so we have to ask ourselves what, what, what makes Pele better. I think he is. Um, yeah. And one thing <laughs> is he's won three World Cups and Messi's only won one World Cup. Um, <laughs> another thing is... Um, actually, I saw, saw a, um, a YouTube video and published, put it on, on, on Facebook uh, about Pele. And the video said... He did it first. So a, a lot with of... That, Simon, with that, and I'll stop you in that cliffhanger point, and we're going to take a break. As I said, as Bertel Breck says, grub comes before morality. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back to your cliffhanger points about... Uh, Can we put a time? Uh, You're listening to Birmingham's Big Big Community FM, New Style Radio. It's the bomb. New Star Radio are now recruiting. Are you a radio personality who wants to be on the radio? Whether you're a talk show presenter, DJ, news, sports, weather reporter, or a social media vlogger, we are also looking for technical engineers and persons with digital marketing experience. New Star Radio is now looking for new recruits to volunteer for spots on our radio platform. We will provide you free technical training to help you develop your skills. Come and join our diverse multicultural team and serve our communities. Here is how to apply. Please record and upload a three-minute video of your performance and DM it to our New Star Radio Live Instagram page. For more info, please email us at newstarradiolive at gmail.com or call us on 07584-197-380. Visit newstarradio.com. Greetings. Still not sure when or where to book your well-deserved holiday?
sorry now to uh, before the break we were uh, we were discussing Pele or uh, or, or me, uh, Messi and I made the point that uh, Salmon if Messi probably wasn't a, a white great hope I, 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 I like to throw in another point uh, in relation to this now before um, the great tier Henri and um, Zidane and uh, the, the, the French players we know know and love so much. There were two great French players. One name was uh, Michael Platani, who we still know because he was in the news because of his problems with um, FIFA and being uh, arrested and all the rest of it. But whenever <coughs> there were reports about um, France playing, there was another name, a man called Tigane. No, I wonder how many of our listeners are indeed Simon and um, uh, Maxi remember Tigany because Tigany and and uh, Platini were um, inex inseparable. They were like those uh, we were talking just now about Pele <coughs> and Carlos Alberto and Josina and all of the, the, the remarkable uh, 1970 team. But who remembers Tigany? Yet we all know about Platini. Now that's instructive, is it not? Because I think Tigany was as great a player as. Um, as platinum. So, Simon, you were saying uh, you're making the point about uh, 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 Pele and uh, Messi. Yeah, but the basic point I want to make is that as black people, we want to say there isn't a debate here. Pele is the, the goat, the greatest of all time. Stop asking the question. That, that, that's what we want to say, but I'm saying that it's a, there is a genuine question here. What is, uh, so what is it about Messi? What is it, Simon? Simon, I bring you. What is it about Messi? Do, well, you well, I suppose it, which it, makes him comparable in any way with well, uh, one is his dribbling, his control uh, of the ball. Okay. Uh, he he passes very well, um, and um, when there's a goal opportunity, he can he kind of think. Well, it's likely that he'll get the goal rather than not get the. Goal. He doesn't always, but it's likely that he'll get the goal. He's not. Then not so. So so he, he is. Um, he must be one of the best players oh, he did, that there has been. He's on top five greatest player, but we're talking about the greatest now. Who, so so th that means that there is a there is a, a question, there is a debate as to who uh, actually is the greatest. So it, it, so I'd say we shouldn't just dismiss the question. We should. What about the winning the three World Cups? What about the winning three World Cups? Well, exactly. So one of the reasons that Pele is the greatest is because he he's won three World Cups. No one else has done that. Okay. Um, oh. and, and Pelé started when, um, well, actually, I think I think Messi started when he was quite young. But Pelé actually played in a World Cup when he was about seventeen. Uh, I think it was in fifty-eight. As as, as um, Messi, Pelé's artistry. As Messi, Pelé's artistry. Um. What, and I mean, art, when I go to my wife and myself, go to the ballet I, 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 very often. So I know what I mean when I said artistry. Well, I, I, I'd say Messi has artistry. Um, Computer players? Uh, well, that, that's a question. That's a question we've got to answer. Yeah. So there is three World Cups. Messi's only got one. Um, but, uh, also, recently, uh, I saw a YouTube video of showing uh, uh, Pele's skills. Now, again, I, you know, I was fairly young when Pele was... Um, was playing, so I can't say I remember greatly um, how uh, um, how good Pele was. But this this YouTube, <laughs> um, yeah, my argument is from from YouTube. This YouTube um, set it out for me in that um, the the YouTube was um, showing um, Pele uh, um, exercising in some of his skills. Um, and then showing other people, other greats that we know, Johan Croy, for instance. So we'd see Pele um, doing a dribble that we we actually associate with with uh, Johan Croy, but Pele did it first. And there's a whole series of different skills that um, Pele did, uh, where we can say he did it. He did it first. And I think that that's in, in terms of the, the, the his technical skills and artistry. That that again is a, is a good. Um, reason to say he is the greatest. So, Simon, so, Maxim, before I bring you in, Simon, uh, one of the, why people love Brazil um, so much and, and watch them playing, as you say, it's not for the goals they score, but it's how they score it. Now, uh, in 1970, one of the things we, the world saw, probably for the first time, is a team of 11 people starting in the, at their end, and literally they probably passed the ball to all 11 and and then go on and score. Has uh, Messi been ever been involved in anything like that? In that kind of artistry. Well, Barcelona was known for the the, the 
Spanish yeah. club Barcelona. Of there, course, I've uh, been to Barcelona know. many times. Um, I know the city well. Uh, in, in terms of a World Cup, I, I'm not too sure. I don't think so. Um, so uh, you can say that you know, Brazil sort of, sort of mastered that uh, before other clubs, uh, other clubs, other football teams uh, uh, did. Um, so, um, but I know, that's, that's about the whole club, isn't it? Rather than just an individual. But but, um, but he was uh, probably, as Max said earlier, um, that incredible last goal, where um, literally um, uh, Pele, literally as Max said, you have this one. Uh, it's well, well, memorable, isn't it? Well, well, Carlos Alberto was a defender, and he. Uh, it, what was shocking is that he struck the ball like he's an, he's a, a forward. One of the greatest. <laughs> And he just whacked the whacked the ball. You can sort of imagine. You can uh, remember the image of him kicking the ball uh, and, and can, flying talking, into the net. Yeah. While we're talking about Carlos Alberto, can we um, just pay tribute to him that unfortunately he died recently? Um, he died. Uh, really, I can't remember what age he was, but he died recently. And if we can just say pay tribute to the great, the great man. No, Maxi, uh, uh, what do you make of all of this? Uh, I'm biased. <laughs> I'm biased. I'm biased. Why say bias and, and not objective? No, I mean, there's some objectivity there as well. But but I, I am biased because he's black first and foremost. He looks like me. He's he's he got my. I can identify with him. When I think, when I take the geographical, the, the sociological, the whatever into consideration, to think that. Pelly was born 50 years after the release, the enslave, after the enslavement of black people in Brazil. That to me is so wonderful. And I'm really glad that his mother is still alive. She's 100 oh, yes. years old. So was my auntie and the 30, on my birthday. My auntie in America was 100 years old. So <laughs> congratulations. Black people are living more, longer. I just, Whenever there comes a time when, and, and, and I agree with you, Simon, when you say that there is a question, you're not just going to just say, shut up and don't debate it. But to me, it's not necessary. And too many times we're the underdog. Black people are the underdog. And any time we seem to, it's like intellectualizing. You, you reach a point. And what make you, then you lose the point because you start intellectualize at, about the same thing over and over. That's the only thing I would say about that. <laughs> you understand? Pelly has proven, proven time and time. And is it the thing about it, the interesting thing about it? The 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 the, 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 the glorification, if you like, are they claim me, me, hasn't just come from Brazilians. It comes from a global <laughs> It's globally accepted that Pelly, but somehow, if you like, you keep chipping. I like the phrase that that, that um, Philip used earlier. You know what that was? You remember what you said? Do you think he's the uh, Messi? He's a great white hope. As far as I'm concerned, now that Pelly is dead, I don't care. We can debate them, him and Ra Ronaldo. As long as we want. Thank you. Yeah, did you hear me, Philip? Mm, Ronaldo. I say, now that Pelly is dead, they can the, 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 the great white hope can emerge from Messi and Ronaldo. Uh, that, that, that's there for. But do you think, do you, do you, Max, do you think that um, Argentina will do what um, Brazil did? Uh, many people don't know this, but Argentina actually passed a, a law um, saying that Messi is a national treasure, literally Ronaldo. saying he's a national, oh, he's a national treasure, meaning that uh, um, that he is state property, in, in a sense, and that his movement is a is a vital importance of state. So, for example, in this country, if you're moving uh, an important uh, uh, treasure, you, the government has been consulted. Brazil passed a law <laughs> saying that what 
You mean Brazil? Brazil. No, Argenti Argentina. Argentina. No, no, Brazil. I'm talking about Brazil. Brazil passed a law saying that Pre Pele is a national treasure. So well, it's Pele. life. Pele. Yeah, yeah. Max, the reason why we call it Pele, of course, is that there's an accent on the E. So uh, yeah, yeah. It, instead of saying Pele, Pele yeah. we say Pele because uh, yeah. the accent on the E is the yeah. Spanish name, of course. So Pele, uh, I speak Spanish, so I know that. Uh, Pele um, is a, na no, his name is Portuguese, but Pele is a national um, um, treasure. Do you think Argentina would ever do this for Messi? Uh, can, I just, can I just finish the point? I'm trying to, to make here. I don't think it's complete, but I hear you. I'm saying now that Pele has is dead. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, and and you said there should be a debate. I don't mind what type of debate need to take place between the great white hope, as you put it, Philip. No, I didn't say it was. I was just I, no, I no, put no, it, no, I put it messy, in the question mark. Messy. <laughs> I like that phrase because it's like. Remind me of um, Ben Johnson in boxing when the white, white world gathered to, um, when he was so, when he became champion of the world, the white world gathered to, to get a white person to, um, to take the title. So we call it the great white hope. And that in this case, I think it's a great white hope between those two. But Pele, leave Pele out of it. Pele is Pele, supreme, and rightfully so that um, the government has put that, 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 that thing in place, whatever, yeah. in place. But I want Simon to do something for me here. Mm -hmm. The four people, the four countries that was in the... Um, I, I, I was reading your Facebook. Mm -hmm. yes. And I like the way you described or you, you, you cut them. Out. You said Argentina got rid of black people. Years they ago. did, they did, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, they kill them off, yeah. I don't scratch your kill them off. They, they, well, they, well, they got rid of them. Got you. Not necessarily so, kill them so, off. So, they what just, did they do then, Philip? What, what do you mean? Deported them. No, they, listen, they, 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 it wasn't genocide. So just, to, just to explain this, yeah. Uh, yeah. I did it's a Facebook important. post. It's important. Yeah. Um, before the semi finals of yeah. the, the World Cup, thinking, who, who do we support? Yeah, France France was France. I, I, described, I described France as uber imperialists. Yeah, imperialists. Who were malicious towards Haiti. There were lots of Africans. People from African descent playing for France. Yeah. Nonetheless, France yeah. as a nation is uber in Yes, because because yeah. although I was cheering for France, I know it wasn't France I was cheering for as a country. I was cheering for the African and the French black players, just like in Britain. The only when I don't necessarily want England to win any any match. I want the black players within those ranks to do well. But perhaps not to the point of winning. Max, isn't there, a, isn't there a footballing issue here? What I'm getting at is this. That most people, most people who love football, always want Brazil to win because of the artistry we, we talk about. You mean many people? Uh, well, most, most people. But most. Anyway, let's, well, a lot of people then. Yeah, uh, yeah, but the point it. I'm making, though, is that a lot of people, despite so many people, the majority of people love Brazil because of their artistry. Now, yet a lot of people, myself included, didn't feel so bad about uh, Brazil not winning this time because we all wanted Messi to win a World Cup. No, <laughs> because of the honor, because the hu Max, honor, because the human factor connected to you. He was a great player, as we've all said. Everyone acknowledges he's one of the five greatest players in the world, and he has never won the World Cup. So, did you think that there was? It, it was football as opposed to the wider issues we are talking you about. Can't avoid it. Actually, football people. Oh no, a lot of not you probably not you, Maxi, but a lot of people uh, didn't feel so bad about uh, France or Brazil not winning because of the not Argentina's Max, as you're saying. Mm. Uh, apart from anything else, speaking personally now for myself, uh, I detested the fact that Argentina didn't have a, any black players. They brought one on uh, occasionally. I detested that, and I didn't want them to win for that. But just because of Messi, I was pleased that they won, and I believe, Max, I put it to you that a lot of footballing loving people they may share do, that view. But yeah, I, I, I no, don't they do? But Maxi Alfonso Hills don't. <laughs> That's the difference. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know, because I'm basing it, and this is why I, I, I told Philip about the, the Facebook page you wrote. Or didn't I tell? Of yeah. course. Because when people are cheering, when we're cheering. You cannot avoid the historical facts, but you have to campaign at the moment for that. I would, I didn't want Argentina to 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 to, to win for those reasons, and I didn't want, I, but I wanted France to win 
for the reasons as also I gave, complicated as it may seem. Portugal, as that's another. Uh, but Max, Max, life, is life is complicated, isn't it? Let me give an example. I notice that I've been to both Tunisia and, and Morocco, I've been to those, both those countries, Morocco several times, and I notice that even though there were obviously non-white people and clearly mixed race people in, 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 Morocco, in, in Tunisia, the Tunisian team and the Moroccan team, it was noticeable compared to our uh, contrast with the Saudi team, mm. that there were no people you'd call... Uh, 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 well, they're all Africans. No, no, but no, they're no people. Af well, they're all... Yeah, they're, they're people who would usually describe as well, Negro. Like as, as, as Negro. Negro, right. as yeah. Negro. Yeah. Uh, that's... Uh, th that was interesting. That uh, I'm concerned about this. Max, uh, Sam, okay, any, okay, okay. Any, I just want to cl clarify the, what the dilemma is in yeah. terms of the semi-finals of the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Who do we as black people support? There was Morocco, yeah. there was Argentina, uh, there was France, yeah. uh, and, and there's Croatia. And that's why I asked the question, who, who, who do we... Who do we support? I, and the way I put it, it wasn't just about footballing issues. I brought in political issues yes, as well. Yes, you're right. Um, mm -hmm. So, so that, 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 that's the sort of dilemma. Now, now, I'd argue that it was kind, I say kind of, fitting that Argentina won because of Messi. In, in that, for me. in that mm -hmm. Messi being a great player, he ought to have been, a, you know, Argentina ought to win for him as he, he were. He ought to yeah, win. yeah. Okay. Well, so, 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 but, so, but the issue yeah, is about yeah. Moroccan Tunisia. Also, man, Moroccan Tunisia. I, I was hostile to uh, Argentina not playing a black player. Portugal had a lot of black players, France, etc., etc. Even some of this kind of uh, 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 Belgium, lot of black players, Su uh, Switzerland. That, that, What's going on with that, Morocco that and Tunisia? Well, if, uh, if you're talking about just black players, that would mean we should support France, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. They had the far more yeah, black players than the other people. That's one of the reasons why I support them. Um, but but in, in terms of um, Morocco, Morocco, I mean, I, I've heard from some African friends that I know that you know that they have an issue with um, blackness. Yeah, yeah that that that, so, uh, that part of that, um, yeah. um, uh, Africa is an issue. North Africa, mm -hmm. in, so, can I come in from? No, oh, please, please. Uh, North Africa, you mm -hmm. didn't finish. Yeah, Doesn't North mean. Africa has got a hot attitude. Tunisia, um, Morocco. There's no way on planet Earth would I want Morocco to win. So, so, yeah. so, so there's so a lot of there, there, was a lot, the, there was a lot of support the, the, from. The, to dance with them from black people mm. and progressive because they don't know the, the, the history to, to support Morocco. Yeah, what one reason was political reasons was because Morocco showed support for pal Palestinians. Okay. Uh, so, so there was a lot. Over. There was a lot of support from progressives that that Morocco yeah, should yeah. win. Give over. Yeah. Where, where, whereas my post suggested, uh, well, that, that, that they have issues with their African identity. Yeah. Exactly. But Maxi, uh, well, Sam Maxi, I <laughs> want an African country. To win the World Cup, but I must say, I've got to say, as a as a footballer uh, uh, support and agent and uh, uh, Sinado, I did not want a country like Morocco to win, uh, and not just because of the racial thing. Uh, I, I, I th that's important. But if they were playing um, football, which was great football, I'd have wanted them to win. Even I could forgive them for not having anyone of uh, for a black skin. I could forgive them for that. What I couldn't forgive them for is their quality of footballing. What do you well, think? Well, well, on that on that question, who who should have won? I mean, should Argentina have won rather than France? I'd argue did, did did France did not France play better? Than, than Argentina during, during in the, the latter Cup stage of the match, not the, in the latter yeah. stage of the match, not the earlier stages. I think they not, did. In not, the, not first the first half, half they, they, yeah. in the first half they didn't. It was unusual. Yeah, I don't know but, what happened but, there. But, but but then then the Cumber man, we noticed we haven't mentioned his name. Um, um, the new star man. The, the, um, oh yeah, Mbappe. About Mbappe, come on and just oh, teach yeah. them how to, oh, to play yeah. football. I really love when he intervened. And when that, I thought to myself, and the, 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 the panic, the thing for me, Philip, mm -hmm. two things. I'm the only one in my household that drink alcohol. And I'm the only one, Steve, if Steve will come over, we don't have, you know, and when he come over, he drives. You're son-in-law. Yeah. Son-in-law. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm the only one that likes sports. My wife only likes sudden deaths. But she don't realize that the game have to play up to the point of sudden death. <laughs> and that's the worst type, sudden death. 
when 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 they have to do that. No, seriously, no. France for me, right? I like the way France play football. I think they're a better, they're a very good world team. They should have um, won it. Um, unfortunately, they didn't. And they have some, and they always, whether Le, Le, Le Pen, you know that racist argument. Le Pen. Le Pen. Le Pen. The last World Cup, they disowned the football team. Did you know that? They, because they said they're too black. They, they, they didn't want, they, they, step, they, they seems to be more accommodating now. Um, it was interesting to see the president went there and embrace them. But you see, even, even so, even so, for me, Simon Hines and Philip Murphy, mm -hmm. I cannot forgive France for the, the, the atrocities which is still taking place about reparation for Haiti. I still can't. Mm -hmm. And um, although I have to say, that I have to cheer the country on, but it's not a country I'm cheering really, it's the players. I cannot get the politics out of the way. So, so, so uh, who, who did black people support? France. Fra France. For uh, footballing reasons, of course, not for political... Uh, well, because there were more, because there were more black people. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Rather they, than for footballing reasons. Uh, in some cases for football, because they're the, cha yeah, yeah, they're well, the champion. Mbappe, you know. yeah. They're yeah. still a cha they were the champion. Well, all all your point is now, we're going to have, as I keep saying, grub <laughs> comes for morality. We're going to have an advert. Then now. then after then after uh, the advert, we'll, we'll, have our final, we'll, uh, we'll have our final comment from our guests. <laughs> You're listening to Birmingham's Big Big Community FM, New Style Radio. It's the bomb. Finally, it's here, the best restaurant in the UK. Good overall delight. 339 Dudley Road, Birmingham, B18 4HB. We prepare a local...
singing endlessly um, uh, 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 the, as often happened in Jamaica Jamaican artists covered uh, songs uh, made famous by black Americans of course as Max was mentioning to me just now uh, Brooke Benton did a, a, a wonderful version of that but we have had a wide ranging uh, discussion which we'll be ending now we'll be getting some final comments from our guests Max Ailes and Simon Hines. But before uh, we finish the discussion about uh, football, I must say that I was very pleased uh, that Costa Rica not only scored the one goal which I thought they were going to score, but they also won too much. My daughter and uh, grandchildren live in Costa Rica, so there's a psychological element to it. I had this great support of Costa Rica because my daughter is living there. So, gentlemen, uh, we've had a wide-ranging discussion from... Uh, from uh, uh, black section, grassroots politics, uh, football, reparations, etc., etc. Uh, have you any final comments uh, uh, as to what's happening with the politics in this country? We've had an exceptional situation happening. We've had a non-white prime minister. What's your view about where politics is going in this um, country as a result of this? We, have, we also had, at one point, three non-white um, people holding the highest office in the land, Home Secretary, Foreign Secretary, and Chancellor of uh, Is there a radical fundamental change in our society, gentlemen? Um, well, not too long ago, I was having a discussion with other Labour Party members, Black Labour Party members, Labour Black Socialists, uh, and the discussion was about uh, Labour, and th th a lot of people were quite depressed, uh, actually, and, and spoke that um, fighting racism in the Labour Party just is just too hard at the moment, uh, some people actually left the Labour Party, uh, and, um, and some of these were councillors. Um, and they're basically saying um, f for individuals to take on the Labour Party, you know, it, it, it as it were, hurt too much. So um, there's a lot of despondency um, uh, in, in terms of uh, in, uh, the Labour Party. Um, in, in terms of the, the first um, uh, black uh, or Asian um, prime minister. Um, I, I, I guess that that um, that to some extent is is about the, the extent to which the, um, the Asian community has managed to uh, find an economic foothold in in the UK. That that, that they're sort of fairly well organised. Um, I mean, I, I hear lots of Indians now tend to support Conservatives rather than than, than Labour, uh, but they've organised in, in in a way economically. Um, uh, that has meant a certain degree of, of independence, as it were, uh, and that, that uh, that's got them um, uh, um, got an individual as a as a as a PM. Um, globally, uh, I'd, I'd want to say that um, things seem to be changing fairly significantly. The Ukraine war is an example of that. The Ukraine war, in a way, was a line drawn in the sand globally, uh, and. Um, the, the West faces the prospect of being alienated from the, the rest of the world. Um, it's to some extent, I think, that um, um, the, the Europe, France and Germany will have to make a decision sometime in the future as to whether to go along with the US or go, uh, go with China and, and Russia. Max, do you think that the, having a non-white um, prime minister means a fundamental change in our society? It is a change, yes, but whether it's a good change or not, I don't think so. And the word post, post ratio come to mind uh, because of people jumping. Incidentally, my son, uh, who is an academic person, uh, a very wise young man, spoke to me the day before, uh, where was it? New Year's Eve. No, my birthday is New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and he says, Dad, lives in London there. He says, I said, where are you now? He says, he's at the wheel, the, the big wheel. And he says, thousands and thousands of people come out. 
And he says, so much Asian people that, and I'm not talking about that because I don't dislike Asian people because they, the very fact that they seem to support each other is fine. My only problem is I don't like people to pre pretend that they are what they're not. When, only when their asses are being kicked, they turn, then they become black. That is my problem. And I think the great worst thing for us, and first, I was a part of it. So was you, Philip. So were you, Simon. When we accept the term, the political black, it's the worst thing we ever did. And right now, we can't recover from it. We have to, it's going to take a lot of work. When Obama won as the first mix, and I should say mix, a race, young man, on the scene, because he, he could classify that he wasn't black. Because Jesse Jackson could have won that election, but he wasn't black enough. It's as simple as that. Many times we, we as black people, we fail to... You to, mean he wasn't white enough? He was, sorry, he wasn't white enough. He yeah, was too okay. black. Thanks for me. So this post-racial post uh, nonsense that now that we have an Asian person he, as, as leader, he's good, he's not necessarily so. Uh, but I wish him well. The, um, um, because I, I just think he's, he's got another thing coming because there's a thing called, you know, the Brexit election the, with the exit of Europe, of, of Britain from Europe, was the agenda was immigration and anti-black it's the same sort of vote when you when you try to say you're gonna support a system and bring in your own people and that girl is his own people because she shouldn't be there the 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 the, 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 the home secretary to to want to send deport people to places like you you got you under you're gonna have, he's gonna have to rely on the far right racist vote. And that's what he's, he's gonna rely on. So he's gonna use that racism to actually support, to actually suppress black people. He won't be any good to black and, and people. He may be good to, to some aspect of, because he's making trade links with India and all, they embrace him. But the thing what my son said, Dad, they come out in their thousands and they're walking like just boastful. And I says, is it your imagination, son? He says, no. He says, they have this extra thing with them. But oh, why do, he says, do they come out because they, they need support because they're afraid or what? Or because Sadiq Khan. I just want to remind him that London, Mayor is an Indian, Sadiq Khan, and the Prime Minister is an Indian. So, but then the lesson from this, and the crucial lesson for us as African Caribbeans, I'm glad it happened, because this is the time, and I hope 2023, yes, is the time when we learn from that, this, because we've been left behind. And as I said, I'll, re I'll return to it. I said to black people in the past, we must breed more. To use the word of a better language, we must, what's it you call it? We must um, um, mult multiply more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We must, we must, mul because it's, it's, it's the number, numbers game. So we must, multiply more and it's a multi and or else we're gonna end up being a miserable minority and that's what happened to so I just hope 2023 will those factors that we just discussed Maxim, my, will black people aren't a minority people in the stand world they're more non-white people but no, I no, think no, is, no, no, but, but isn't let's just jump the four more isn't no, it isn't the fundamental Max just hold on me please isn't the fundamental issue yeah. about uh, Obama I know that's your favorite <laughs> topic isn't the important issue about Obama and Rishi Sunak is that they were exceptional people in terms of ability, whatever their race, color is. Isn't, it, isn't that the point? Oh, no, 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 Max. Not that, I didn't say desperate. Isn't the point about them is that they're extraordinary capable individuals? 
one is a billionaire for a start so that's extraordinary wealth to gain you know so that's a head start long long time so in that case in that case snook is an individual if snook t would if i had the opinion the the, the one to feel that snook was going to be so good so max snooks uh, is this the, the, the prime minister oh it's an, uh, rishi yeah, snook if he was going to be not selfish and he was going to spread it a bit around where african and caribbean co communities but if if if, if keith vas is anything to go by i can't if if you know the thing i'm saying if he stresses it around then i don't mind but i i don't have any faith in this prime minister i don't think Max, I don't think we're asking you to have faith in him. I'm asking you if, is, if, if isn't there something exceptional about them that they're yeah. very capable One, individuals? Well, 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 well. Obama was very articulate, but he didn't leave a legacy, did he? When he went a proper legacy, he should have leave a legacy. He, he, and, and Obama made a massive mistake because he should have done better. So, so, but he was an exceptional individual because of his articulation and his intelligence. Maxi, Sunak, those... because of his multi billions behind him, is also exceptional. Maxi, your comment about Obama is tendentious, but we we'll leave it there. Simon, <laughs> what do you think about? Is it? Uh, well, well, uh, uh, firstly, it, is it uh, corruption uh, or extraordinary ability? Well, well, firstly, in t terms of organising and anti-racism, I don't think I, 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 I can't imagine doing that without the support of, of Asians. Uh, it, it, I, I do it today, and I can't imagine it um, do, not doing, not organising with Asians in the future. We're too um, uh, uh, Obama, we're talking just now. What I'm posing is, um, uh, let me put it in a, in a wider context for you, Max, and you probably understand. In France, uh, people used to dis, um, dismiss uh, Flaubert, the writer, as a petit bourgeois, uh, 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 petit bourgeois uh, person. Uh, Sartre used to say that there are hundreds of thousands of petty bourgeois rentiers in France, but only one man wrote uh, Madame Bovary, and he, want, and he wrote something like five massive volumes, 600 pages, to answer the question, why did Flaubert write Madame Bovary, as opposed to the other hundreds of thousands of petty, uh, petty bourgeois rentiers in France? The question I'm posing is, why didn't um, many, many millions of other African Caribbeans, mixed race, whatever you want to call them, or many, many other Asians become prime minister. But Ricky Sunak did, and Obama did. That's the question. Well, well uh, Obama did have did have help. We, he had help that we don't know about. Yeah, the Kennedys. We were behind um, him fully. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, he had he had help. I mean, if you look in his, into his background, uh, on both sides of his uh, par uh, parents, parents, uh, the, the, right. the, there was CIA. Um, but, <laughs> I don't know but, about that. <laughs> there are many other mixed race um, black Americans that didn't become prime minister. Go on, sir. But, uh, but I, th I think he, he was exceptional. No, I mean, I'd rather have well, Obama. There's another part there, Philip. I'd rather have Obama as president yeah. now than, yeah. than, um, than the, the, the idiots we, we have uh, uh, at the moment. So, so I think Obama was uh, exceptional. Um, and I, I guess also you can say that Sunak was also. Although, I'm um, asking you. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, imagine, say, um, five years b before he became Prime Minister. C could you imagine an Asian being... An Asian I being, couldn't. No, 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 you couldn't, really. Couldn't. Even though um, Asians and, and, and black people hadn't made headroads into the Conservative Party. And you had sort of uh, Max, black black people, there's no question about it. No one becomes President of the United States, Prime Minister of this country, without having an enormous support, both in terms of party, both in terms of wealth, both in terms of education. Max, that goes without saying. The question still, this question still is, uh, the question still is, I'm trying to post it to ask you guys to address, isn't there something exceptional about those two men? Let me widen it a bit. I, I just mentioned... Yeah, just, yeah. I just mentioned Flaubert, but let me widen another way. Many people say, as Trotsky certainly said that, and others said that the Russian Revolution would not have taken place without Lenin. Is there a the point as an there? Individual. Oh, without Lenin, the individual Lenin. And yeah. some would say that the Chinese Revolution wouldn't take place without no Mao Tse Tung. Is this, ideal, is this idealism or is there some facts, that, that, important facts it's here? It's both. Both. No, I, th I think it's a valid point uh, uh, that um, 
uh, Obama was exceptional, Lenin obviously was. I mean, th there's all kinds of issues around the Russian Revolution that we don't know about, to be honest. It's far more complicated than we think. Course, I mean, so Lenin had support from the I German thought. military uh, when uh, going into... Uh, he into a seal train um, to... Provided uh, by the, the Finland um, station, yes. Yeah, yeah people thought that. he was a German spy when he turned up in Russia. Um, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I mean, he was exceptional. And you can yes. say that in his and, writing. And let me go back to the point that Philip all seems to like again. No, because I don't like they, it. Except they, I'm they, put they, another they, point they, to, they, to address. They, um, Not just the racial Ob point, but yeah, the Obama other point. Obama had significant help from his grand, from his, um, from his, 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 his um, grandparents. <laughs> Namely, that there were whites. He could refer during the election campaign, remember? He argued about his grandfather, his great-grandfather uh, fighting for the uh, so, so are, you, are, you, are you saying that because he had white um, ancident, um, grandparents, that meant it was, easier, was for, easier for white it, people to vote for him? Is that what you That's part of it, yeah. yes, because he could identify with, with, with Max, that. I'm, much more, I'm sure you're much right more, that, uh, that the fact that he was mixed saying, race helped. No, 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 I don't think that is, there's any I'm question about it hard. that people he, find it. He was uh, a dynamic, yeah. he, he was, Obama was one of the most dynamic political figure mm. of the international global scene. The only person I would compare with Obama to, and I and I don't hear anybody can articulate themselves more than Farrakhan. Farrakhan is my number one articulated person. I never hear anybody can articulate an issue like Farrakhan. But Obama, his dynamism was because, yes, Philip, you know, you know and I'll tell you why. Let me just tell you this. A woman who ran the head, the, the, uh, the United States Library, she said she was giving a testimony towards Obama. And she said when the first day she saw him, and I'm right reading from his autobiography, um, um, I think it was one of the autobiographies, um, the, 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 what's it, what's it called? The, 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 anyway, she says, I never met anybody as confident as this young man. Who's this? Obama. Oh, yeah. This this white white woman said about him, he was so confident, and you know that fifty percent of the battle is the lack of is our stolen confidence that we don't have as black people. Stolen confidence. It doesn't matter how much PhD our people have, they look they don't have that confidence. Obama was brought up in an household that he could identify with both both sector, but. He was made not to feel inferior as a mixed race young man, and he took that to the global stage, Philip. But well, Max, uh, 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 there's me. a tremendous American historian called Joseph E. Paniel. Mm. Uh, I recommend him to anyone yeah. who's interested in American politics, also in particular an analysis of Obama. He's a great guy. He's written mm. biographies of um, Kwame Torres, Tokyo comic of Black Power leaders. So it's it's. Complex, it's controversial. Another discussion probably we can have as, as to to look at this very very complicated and uh, uh, and, and, and difficult issue. So, uh, finally, gentlemen, what, uh, Maxi, should we give uh, our guest who we don't see often enough in Birmingham the final word? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Simon, I know you've been doing some work about ancestry. Say something to about that oh, to yes. take us into the five o'clock break where, where we finish. Why do you think this is important? Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of work on uh, my own genealogy and ancestry and find out things that I, um, I, I didn't know. And what, one of the things I found out is that um, um, amongst my relatives, uh, people I'm related to, um, are people who um, fought in, in, it's a white people who fought in the um, um, King Philip's War in, in the US. Wow. And the King Philip's War was the first conflict between white people in, in America and Native Americans and mm. my relative is on the side of, of course, of course the white people um, so you know um, he, he, he's heralded and, and recognised what is his uh, name Simon? Um, what's a good question I can't remember his name George Martin probably George was, was, Martin. His, was, his, was his name um, so um, mm. th 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 there's, there's that in, in my history is also um, my father's side um, suddenly discovering that that there was slave owners and, and, and uh, among some people on my father's side. That's something I have to look into uh, a bit more. Um, but the, the whole issue of ancestry, I, I found 
I'm a bit obsessed with at the moment, actually, because um, <laughs> uh, it, it kind of helped me to sort of locate myself, as it were, in time and and time and space, and you know, find out a bit more where I. Max, I Simon, I think you're. Oh, no, Simon, I think you're right. It's uh, it's, a, it's an obs- once you get into it, it's obsessive. For example, during COVID, when I felt I had some time, I started looking at my own ancestry and. I found some shocking things. Um, one, interestingly, I, I was able to trace my, um, my some of my ancestors back to slave plantations in Jamaica. That's one thing. I have some um, Asian uh, ancestors, and I, I, I've been able to trace my Asian ancestors back to the 19th century. Unfortunately, what I'd like to have done is to find out an, an Asian ancestor who came on a ship uh, from India. I've not been able to do that because the record is so bad. But the shocking thing I found out about my relatives, and I had no idea, I have a grandfather who was brown skin, and my name is, of course, Murphy. So I naturally thought that um, uh, we were Irish. There was a big um, plantation in, in, in St. Anne's owned by um, a man called Lord Brownlow, who was on a lot of sugar plantation. I thought we were Irish. What, uh, my grandfather anyway, was uh, Irish ancestry. When I, what I found out looking at my grandfather, my great grandfather, etc., and, their, and their, my great great grandfather, I found out that uh, my relatives weren't Irish; they were Jewish. Now, once I found the name of my my great grandmother's um, father and found out uh, is um, is Jewish name, you know, I was able to trace because the European records are, are very very good. I was able to trace my ancestors back to the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal, and uh, my my relative name are Solomon. You name a Jewish name, they're all. So it's, ladies and gentlemen, Simon is quite right. It's a fascinating um, 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 pastime, and with that, probably at a, a, a future time, we can talk about these things. Uh, and, of course... Um, uh, um, can I uh, thank our producer uh, of uh, Breakthrough Music and uh, ACMC Newstar Radio and NewStarRadio.com and, and all our uh, guests. Uh, I, I think later today uh, Breakthrough TV will be broadcasting, um, so you can, if you're interested in this kind of discussion, mm. um, uh, you can join us. Once again, thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed our music, and certainly uh, you must have um, enjoyed and learned a lot from our two outstanding guests, um, Simon Hines and Max Hills. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Birmingham's number one for African arts, culture and Afro edutainment. Edutainment. 98.7 News. I was told, you know, that I must go to Scotland, we must go to Scotland to follow our narratives. Now, they said my great-great